G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. I'd like to thank the Royal Astronomical Society of New Zealand for putting my name forward to be one of the judges, along with all the other great names of history who have judged this renowned competition. It's really an honor, especially since all of the work that I'm about to see is going to blow me away. And yes, I haven't seen it yet. I'm recording this before I've opened the folder to see your work. I've always wondered what happens behind the scenes when people are judging work. Uh, some people that you peek behind the curtain and see that, and I'm gonna do that with you because I want you to know that uh, although this is a technical hobby, there is a subjective experience to seeing these images and having an emotional response to them. And let me just say, I love New Zealand. New Zealand was one of the last holidays I had before I had children. So it was the last holiday I had that I enjoyed. So without further ado, I'm gonna open up this folder. I'm gonna enjoy this because I just get to sit and look at the best images from New Zealand for hours. Don't worry, this won't be an hours long video. I'll just show you how this is gonna work. Kiora, do you like a big dick, cuzzy bro? Then you're probably a Kiwi astronomer. And you have the same problem that us Australians do in that we're on the arse end of the planet, best guys in the world, but the worst shipping rates ever. In this video, you'll see some of the best astrophotography, world class because of that fact. And right at the end, you'll see some amazing time-lapse videos. So stick around for that. But right now, I'd like to thank the show sponsor, Bintel. Bintel, or the Binocular and Telescope Shop, are in Sydney, Australia. And they ship stuff from all over the planet. Europe, China, America, everywhere. And it's right there in Sydney, so that they can ship it quickly to you across the pond in New Zealand. And remember, even though you're looking at the website and you see those prices in Australian dollary dues, once you go to the checkout, you don't have to pay tax because GST is our tax not yours, so you save 10% straight away. Go to www.bintel.com.au to browse the whole range. Chew. First thing I'm going to consider is making my room really, really dark. So I usually have this iMac profile uh, for my color, uh, but I think it's best to judge in Adobe RGB. But I'm not gonna overthink this because I know that everyone has different monitors, uh, hopefully this flat color space will just make it kind of uh, easier to judge. And there are several gigabytes of entries for me to look through. Oh my God, this is gonna take forever. Now look, I've just realized that uh, the file names have names on them. So there may be people that I actually know in real life here. So trust me, trust the integrity of the process and me as a judge, I will make sure that there is no bias in this process whatsoever. I've got all the entries here. Yep, yep, yours included. That's right, you know the deal. Just put the money in the account. All right, thanks buddy, see ya. Now, once I've seen the image, considered it, realized how bad I am as an astrophotographer compared to you guys, I then go to the heuristics marking section and I'll show you how that works. Twenty-four hours later. Okay, the judging's over. I must say that was a pleasure going through your images and thank you to everyone who entered. Uh, I'll go through the categories in a moment and tell you uh, what's what. Uh, the first category off the rank is Aurora and I've got to say this is not something that I have access to up here in Byron Bay, Australia. Uh, so to see these images were, were really quite, uh, quite shocking for me. Obviously I've seen, you know, images of Aurora before but uh, you guys have them on your doorstep and to see the way you guys frame them, the way you guys highlight them, the different types of aurora, the different types of foreground is really fantastic. Okay, sit back and relax and enjoy the best astrophotography from New Zealand for 2023. Navanique's portrait of Mount Taranaki is a simple single exposure that uses the aurora to bathe the carefully framed landscape in an otherworldly colour palette. The image is sharp and has a natural noise profile from the 8000 ISO that preserves the star field and adds depth and integrity to the photo. 
The large and small Magellanic clouds anchor the image to the southern hemisphere and add some imbalance to an otherwise very symmetrical image without breaking the composition at all. Highly commended. Marvin's image is a striking classic northern hemisphere aurora image that has a sharpness and clarity in a single 8 second frame with a high ISO which will have required noise reduction but also captures a more structured emission with his shorter exposure. The aurora is well framed and balances itself compositionally with the natural and unnatural landscape foreground. Highly commended. Laren's Icelandic aurora is a stitched panorama taken with short 4 second exposures and high ISO that explodes on the screen with a muted colour palette which allows a high level of detail and dynamic range in the structure of the aurora and the slightly trailed water. Although the star field has been affected by heavy noise reduction, the main elements benefit from this smoother gradient. Congratulations on winning the aurora category. Mike's Dark Sky Reserve landscape makes a stunning centerpiece for the graphic illustration of the lunar eclipse shot separately and composited in. Although a clear composite with no lunar reflection in the water, the image is both aesthetic and informative and the Pleiades floats beautifully above the mountain peaks. Highly commended. Chester's masterful acquisition and processing skills are on full display here with an incredible wide field panorama mosaic using a camera lens and a star adventurer tracking mount. When I look at this image as an astrophotographer, it's like looking at a family photo. I can see all my friends there. I probably need some real friends. Highly commended. Paul's single exposure photo of the moon behind the snow caps is amazing on a big monitor. Compositionally, it feels like it shouldn't work, it's awkward, and yet somehow it does. Hyperfocal distance keeps the foreground and background both perfectly in focus without any compositing required. Reaching for the lowest ISO keeps every snowflake crisp as the craters on the moon and it allows the aperture to be stopped down slightly, but the situation has enough golden sunlight to keep the shutter speed at a perky 320th of a second. That aside, it's not especially technical or difficult photo to do, it's just very easy to appreciate and understand with no extra knowledge, but Paul does note some effort to get to that spot where it was taken. Congratulations on winning the Dark Sky Reserve category. Logan's image of LDN43 is captured and processed very close to perfection. The colours are even and realistic with a very flat field and well-defined stars. The highlight is the eerie glow behind the dark nebula itself, and it's great to see dark nebulae which are plentiful in the southern hemisphere. Highly commended. Joe has imaged another famous southern hemisphere nebula with a wide field that perfectly illustrates the various levels of extinction that occur from nose to tail of the Corona Australis dark molecular cloud. It's very tempting to push the black level here, uh, which Joe has not done and it retains much of the fainter wisps of the outer cloud. Highly commended. Amrit's incredibly deep exposure of the close galaxy Centaurus A has truly paid off for the two years he collected data in order to produce this image and reveal the outer glow and the relativistic jets that are difficult to see in visible light. This kind of image is altogether uncommon, but has not been selected merely for effort but for the careful processing, contrast and colour, Amrit has pulled out of the image. Congratulations on winning the Deep Sky category. Glenn was the only entrant who submitted an image with the stars intentionally out of focus. There were a few entries where it was clearly unintentional. He uses short depth of field and focuses on the sunflower foreground, but the background still has intention with the brightest core of the Milky Way positioned and glowing brightly, but natural coloured for a disarming daytime effect. My wife Anna thinks I'm wrong to choose an out of focus astro photo, but this is the artistic category, so creativity is encouraged. Also, Anna, the Royal Astronomical Society of New Zealand didn't call you to be a judge. They called me. So, highly commended. 
Tom's carefully planned and constructed composite showing the position of the Andromeda Galaxy is a testament to integrity and processing in these kinds of images. By stacking the foreground and background separately and carefully, he's produced an image which has a sense of realism, usually absent from these kinds of images. There is very little if any noise reduction so it has a perfectly natural film grain quality and that adds to the realism of the image. There are a few dead pixels which could have been removed in the foreground, some trailed stars at the edges of the composite, but it reminds me that this image is under-processed, not over-processed, which is a good thing, and it made me like it more. Highly commended. Rebecca's creativity shines as brightly as the South Celestial Pole in her extremely clean and aesthetic star trail image. Also composited with the single shot foreground with respect to the actual position of the South Celestial Pole, it has a great natural foreground colour and blue shifted background colour which doesn't stray excessively far from reality. Artistically the composition and crop are excellent so congratulations on winning the Nightscape's artistic category. Rolf's highly detailed crater definition is achieved by collecting several exposures over the course of the lunar month such that the craters across the entire field appear to have the same angled shadow coming from the left hand side illumination. The dynamic range is pleasing edge to edge, only flirting with overexposure on the bright side but never quite getting there, and leaving a similarly dark side on the right. All of this while boosting the saturation carefully and without destroying detail to reveal the lunar mineral geology of the moon too. Highly commended. Paul has taken a very natural looking total solar eclipse photo and although the craters lack definition that may have been achieved with a telescope or longer lens, it makes up for it with the optical glow around the moon which can be captured with this very natural wider view. Highly commended. I assumed Mike had taken this photo of Comet Leonard with a remote observatory, uh, remote data, because it looks so good. That it's taken with a relatively straightforward Potentially portable telescope and camera is amazing with clear definition in the two tails, rippling definition from the ionization that extends to the end of the frame. The coma is small and exposed well and the image is stacked both on the comet and the star field carefully and all while preserving natural star color without clipping the black point of the image. Congratulations on winning the solar system category. Paul's time-lapse captures an unseen drama in the foreground as fog rolls around threatening to ruin the entire imaging session, but instead becoming the main character and extinguishing the sky altogether. Highly commended. Fong's footage is a beautifully composed lunar halo or moon dog that's reflecting and arcing over this perfectly glassy water on a night where most astrophotographers are simply at home having a glass of wine because of the moon. Highly commended. Richard's gentle pan in this sequence from background to foreground create an illusion of depth and movement that is hard to describe, all while the clouds create some drama themselves. Congratulations on winning the time-lapse category. 
And now for the overall winner of the Royal Astronomical Society of New Zealand and Auckland Astronomical Society Astrophotography Competition for 2023. Congratulations, Emirate. A worthy recipient of the overall prize. Well, that was a lot of fun. Listen, if you're at the dinner tonight and you're one of the winners, congratulations. Uh, also check out these lists here. These are the short lists. So these are the people who made me stop. Their images actually made me stop and think and I had to come back to them. They are the short lists. Thank you to the Royal Astronomical Society for letting me see these images before the rest of the world. It was so hard to choose a winner and I know some of them might be controversial, but remember these were just my emotional responses mixed in with a little bit of the technical stuff. So hopefully I added some value with the commentary there as well. Also I hope the regular viewers also enjoyed this little window into the top tier of astrophotography for the country of New Zealand. And I also have to admit, I wrote down a lot of equipment during that whole process because there are some beautiful lenses in there. Please subscribe to this channel if you liked that commentary and you enjoy those photos and you want to learn more about astrophotography in general or you just want to connect with another astrophotographer. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, you've been watching Star Stuff and remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.